Well, I for sure have my doubts as to whether this video will ever make it. Because if it doesn't work, I'm not going to post it. But um, basically, that's eh, a pretty crappy deal. Um, I have fiber optic pulled 1,800 feet. And um, I had a water leak I was digging. And I um, cut into the fiber optic pipe I had buried and cut the cable. So... Um, first thing I did was called this happens to be Frontier so I called Frontier and they're like oh, do a bunch of tests I said look the cables broken in two pieces and uh, basically they're like well we have to pull a new cable but we don't know how much it's gonna be and you know if it's a few hundred bucks cool no problem but they won't even give me a price and actually their technician is supposed to come today but in the meantime I figured hey let me get some tools so I'm attempting to do the fiber splice myself. Um, I've got, there's a few, a few things. This is like one type of stripper. I'm not finding it particularly useful. It's got a fixed little, little size um, cutter in there that's supposed to allow the fiber, you're supposed to put the fiber in, squeeze it, and it's supposed to uh, strip. That one hasn't been great. These, I like, these are more familiar. I mean, I automotive guy so I use ones like this they have a little adjustable set screw here so they were a little big before and I changed the set screw so now I can strip it um, I'm using my regular razor blade alcohol and basically I bought these tools including this cleaver from Amazon for 40 bucks here are the instructions they are 100% in Chinese and very little pictures i don't speak chinese so um i'm kind of figuring it out i bought separately these little connectors um these are pretty janky i, I saw the 3m ones the 3m ones look much better um, but these were like specifically with this kit but now that i'm really like getting a feel for what i'm doing i i i really think that this kit could work with any connector, and these Chinese ones are trash. So, um, if it doesn't work, I'm probably going to, you know, I guess keep my secret with me. But if it does by chance work, I wouldn't get those um, Amazon connectors. I'd get the 3M. That's, there's a part number. I forget it. But basically, the whole deal, this thing is a heavy, you know, this is the main cable that Frontier pulled. So, it's got like the black jacketing. It's got a little ground metal, um, you know, like copper wire. That's really just for tracing it. It's hard to really see, but it's in there. Trust me. Bring it over here. Um, it's got that white thing, the, the first one right there that I'm kind of like pointing at with my finger, my pinky. That's just a fiberglass bead to give it strength. Then this tube is the fiber but it's an outer casing a gel and then the actual fiber is very tiny and blue and then another bead of fiberglass and then there's that ground on the end a little copper or you know a tracer a tracer conductor or something so i'm cutting that open getting this stuff exposed i'm gonna um, cut off the beads cut off the ground and leave just the fiber tube so i've done one i there's no chance i mean this is totally impractical in the field it's a tube of light and i'm working the freaking dirt so you know <laughs> there's a reason why people wouldn't generally try to fix these but here i've got this one cut back there's the tube it's pretty darn tough so i'm gonna do it with my palm okay just one second very tough to see. You can see the blue fiber optic, uh, I forget what they call it, casing or whatever. And then there's that little glass sticking out at the end. That glass is cut to 15 millimeters. The blue, um, 20 millimeters. Um, and then that's specked out by those connectors. The 3M1s may be different, better, whatever, different lengths. But you don't... I'd say the most complicated thing for me being, you know, into wiring, you can't just cut the glass at the end, the little, the little clear whitish one right center screen. You actually have to cleave the end of it. 
that's the purpose of the cleaver. So I'm not going to do a step-by-step. -step. There's plenty of step-by-steps. That's the only reason I have a clue what to do with these Chinese directions. But the whole point is this little cutting wheel effectively cleaves the end of the glass so it's, I don't know, I guess not shattered or something. Um, that wasn't really explained in any of the videos. You know, they use the tool and they slide it and they flip it and boom, boom, boom. And it's like, all right, cool, but why? So that's where I'm at. If it works, it'd be kind of a miracle. If it doesn't work, hopefully this guy from Frontier shows up to be continued. All right, there's the splice. And at least this first one is unsuccessful. I don't know how many times I'll try. Frontier showed up and they're like, oh, yeah, we need to call somebody else. They need to do a, do a new drop. And uh, we don't really fix this stuff. So it's really a waste of time. I'm not sure why they sent their guy, but he was a nice guy anyway. So I'm going to disassemble this um, and maybe figure out why it didn't really work. But you can see this, this cable is really difficult. It's squirrely. It wants to go all over the place. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why it didn't work, but let me set the phone down. I'm going to pull the inner, the actual splice out of like the casing. So this was the holder. That's the actual splice. But like I said, it did not work. So I'm going to look at it, TBD. All right, to be honest, I'm pretty shocked. But I just redid the splice well, about the fourth time. I got optical on. That fiber is now working. Um, so I spent several hours on this. Just splicing it. And <laughs> quite a few more digging it up. So here, check it out. I'm going to buzz down there really fast just so, I mean... I was a little skeptical that I could even really get this to work. And even the Frontier guy was like, oh, I don't know, we got a fusion welded or fuse it or whatever. Um, so I'm not really sure this is a good fix, but I spent 50 bucks on Amazon. So hang on one sec, check it out. I could pause it, but I want to prove it's really working. why it's such a long run. what I found. I'm using the noodle, literally a freaking pool noodle, um, just to stabilize so the wire, you know, this wire, this this fiber cable or whatever with the jacket and the beads of fiberglass just is a bear. So I'm kind of taping it onto the noodle just to give me a, a stable workplace. And so here's the difference. I've done about three splices, but this was really what made the difference. I was using this um, cleaver, which has a little wheel from Amazon. And uh, what I found, I don't know if there's like a lot of different sizes of fiber. So please, this is not like I'm a fiber ex expert. Let me show you what I do every day. I'm a DIY guy. My background's automotive. So I don't know if there's a lot of different sizes of fiber, but it never really fit in one of those little channels that well when I kind of magnet it down and when I would close the lid to this um, cleaver it never really seemed to do anything then I would press this like maybe that would cut it but it, it just didn't seem to really work so on the last one what I did was I laid the fiber in there at 15 millimeters and that was called out um, on the package here freaking Chinese so 20 on the blue jacket 
and 15 and 15 on the bare glass stripped and everything so I'm setting that at 15 and I couldn't really get it to cut so what I actually did and there's no way I can duplicate this with one hand and the camera and I'm just trying to get internet back and rolling because I got to teach online in the morning at 7 a.m. so I just held the fiber right there and I just really gently with the non sharp edge of the blade I just popped it right over that sharp wheel and that cleaved it really well and then I just basically um, I'm still not saying that these connectors are great they're kind of trashy but I just basically slid it into the hole on one and on the other and I felt them bump so I knew they were touching and then I kind of pulled the two ends in that's why it's that's why there's a little slack here because I'm trying to make sure they bumped and then right at that point I push down on the little lock. So see these ones, they still have the lock in there. So that top bar is the lock. So bang, I just, I'll, I'll even do one right now. If I get the view, click, it just pops right down. And then, shoot, shockingly, by the time I got up there, the optical light was flashing and then it turned off a red and went to green and I'm rolling. So now what I need to do is put on the bigger, more sturdy base which is this and this this is kind of going to function for the strain relief which is one thing i was really concerned about was like there's no strain relief on this there's like it's going to pull on that glass and snap instantly so this piece is going to kind of hook in here and grab that tube and then both sides and then this will pop down and then i'm even thinking i may um i may even add something there and really tape it up really good and then i just gotta gently fish it back get the slack over there and over there well there you go all right so a little more on that connector there's the center section here i just put the outer housing in and i locked that tube in pretty good so that's gonna keep the tension off the glass and then i'm gonna pop this piece on and I may do um, some further, my own customization, but this is the design of the, of the kit. And then that little metal clamp and that little metal clamp I've got in, I'm just gonna squeeze them down with the pliers. All right, so this may be a little funny, but I don't think it's that funny. Um, so this splice has been working for an hour plus. Um, Look at that little ant. So what I decided to do was just dab some super glue here where the flexible tube goes in and here just kind of to give it even a little bit more grab. And then my main concern is this thing getting stretched. So um, what I've decided to do was one, the super glue, um, and also to make it more water type, I'm going to use my liquid electrical tape. Um, and also, I guess, light proof, I'd imagine, or whatever, resistant to letting light leak out. Um, but also, I came through and I got these two coat hanger. I cut a, a couple straight sections. And this is going to kind of be like inside the cable. There were those fiberglass right here, these fiberglass little beads or whatever. So that way, I'm going to really tape this up good, 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 and hold everything together. And then... Um, Hopefully that'll give it some strength from pulling apart. It seems like, to me, that's the main um, risk of failure over time. And then, of course, because I cut into this conduit, I, I, I'm not going to pull a new conduit. But what I did was I cut a section out, one inch conduit. I slid over it inch and a half, and I left a, a, a few inches cut out. So basically what I'm going to do... Um, and the only way to get this new piece in was I snaked the um, fiber back this way and then put the piece in and then pulled it through. So this, this the fiber is going through this already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the fiber pulled, get it so it's, you know, relatively tight in there. I'm going to clean the pipe. I'm going to slide the inch and a half bigger piece over and then I'm going to seal it with this um, plastic epoxy stick I've got so I don't know it's not exactly the repair I'd want but I mean yeah it's it's a big 
it'd be a big thing. The other thing I could have done is cut out a section of that uh, conduit and done the full-on repair and then pulled a new piece of fiber through. And to be honest, that may be what I do. Um, for the Frontier guy doesn't or can't or won't or whatever splice it, but he's calling a contractor in, like a subcontractor that will. So if they give me a good enough price, I'm gonna leave this exposed. I'll say, cool, let me jump in there, put a coupling, a coupling, and a one inch proper, you know, exact fit piece in there. And then we'd pull from this box way up, way up, way up there. Um, but it kind of depends on the price. So that's my experience with this fiber repair. I got great speeds. I mean, you know, I, I max out the sp speed test at 250 megs, but you know, it was doing that before and it was actually uh, 500 with a different speed test. So it's full speed. I haven't seemed to have lost any megabytes or, you know, bandwidth. So I don't know, learn from me. Maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't, but that's gonna wrap it up. That's what it looks like all sealed up, taped up, everything. Actually, looks pretty stinking good. Looks pretty durable.